to worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the amazing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the one true God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hey, it's so good to see you guys here tonight. Amen. Welcome. We, we're, we are glad that you are here. Hey, just turn to your neighbor and said, hey, I'm glad you're here. We are definitely glad to, to be in Men's Conference 2023. We are here to ignite your faith. We're here to uh, ignite in you a desire to be a better man. Amen. It's, does anybody here want to be a better man? I, I want to be a better man. I Yesterday... I, I came up to do the offering. Some of you were here. You probably remember. And I, uh, I, I tripped coming up the steps. <laughs> and that was, uh, so it was just a little trip. Yeah, it was. Uh, that could have been pretty humiliating. I uh, one time, yeah. <laughs> I I watched uh, uh, my youth leader when I was young. We won't say how long ago that was. Um, he came up some steps like this and fell flat on his face. It was, it was bad. But I, I, I was, I'm grateful that I, I didn't mess up that bad. I, uh, I, uh, you know, we, we mess up sometimes. That's, it's part of, part of life. Uh, you know, I, I want to thank, uh, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm here with my boys. Um, I have my two boys here today. When I was their age, I didn't have a dad that was with me. Yeah, and and I, I wished he was there. And so I, I'm grateful that I've done a couple of things right, right? But I, you know, we mess up, and and but that's okay. I, I was reading a book a while back, and it, and it said that if as a parent, if you get it right, probably like 15, 20% of the time, you're going to be okay. Your, your kids will survive. You, you don't have to get it right all the time. But you know what? One of the things that I think that is going to make a difference in my kids' life is that if I don't get it right all the time, that I can be real and say, hey, I messed up. I, I, I messed up. I, I tripped. And, and, and I almost failed. Or maybe I did fail. You know, I, I'm not perfect. And, and I think they need to know that. I'm not perfect. I, hey, I don't have to be perfect. Right? Because I have, I have a God that's perfect. And, and he has given me grace. He has given me mercy for those moments when I fail. Right? But I, I think our job as men is that we need to be real. I, I got to be real. I can't live this fake life in front of my two boys that, that I'm pretending that I never mess up because then what happens when they mess up? They're not going to know how to handle that. But it, it's okay. It's okay if we mess up because there's forgiveness. There's grace. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guess that was just a side note, but uh, we're so grateful that you're here. Um, I, I, I'm thankful for the uh, ministry that we have uh, here with Brother Crowder. Um, we've been, been blessed by his music and uh, Brother, Brother Graham. It, that was a great message last night. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I didn't come here, actually... Uh, maybe some of you did, but I didn't. I didn't actually come here to uh, hear Brother Crowder. And uh, as as great as your message was, Brother Graham, I and and I'm looking forward to it. But I didn't come here just to hear a message from Brother Graham. Amen. 
I came here to be touched by the King of Kings. I came here to hear a word from God. Amen. And I'm here to worship him in, with all that I have. And I, I want to just lead us into a, a time of worship right now. Let's just worship him. Uh, uh, let's give it our all. We, we're leaders in worship in our family, in our church. Well, let's be men and lead in worship tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, I worship you, Lord. I thank you for your love, God. I thank you for your mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. You are amazing, Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you the highest praise, Lord. We give you the highest praise, God. You are awesome, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, let's worship him for just a few minutes. God, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift it up a little bit higher. Lift up your voice a little bit higher. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Believe on me. Believe on me. Believe on me. Believe on me. Scripture said it. 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 Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Jesus said it, Jesus said it, believe on me, believe on me, believe on me, believe on me, scripture said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, the word of God said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly. Believe on me, believe on me, believe on me, believe on me. Scripture said this, scripture said, scripture said it, scripture said it. The word of God said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, scripture said it. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly. Out of your belly. It's getting kind of cramped back in the back there. There's lots of space up here. 
I wonder if there's any men of God back there that want to get where the getting's good. I wonder if there's any men that feel a little squished that want to find some space to worship him. Somebody get out of the aisle. Somebody get over that aisle. Somebody get down here in the front and say, I've got a river. I've got a river. Hey, I've got a river. was on fire, and the Holy Ghost, the top of my head, so I'm on feet, the feet. Feet. felt the spirit moving, moving all over me, me. Yeah. I've got the river of living water, I've got a river of living water, I've got a river of living water, I've got a river of living water, you don't believe I've been redeemed, follow me, Jordan Street, stepped in the water, was cold, kill my body, but not my soul. You don't believe I've been redeemed. Follow me down to the George Street. I stepped in the water, the water was cold, kill my body, but not my soul. If you don't believe I've been redeemed, you better follow me down the George Street. Stepped in the water, and the water was cold, killed my body, but not my soul. and grab somebody's hand. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're about to scare the devil so bad. Our praise is about to scare the devil. Come on, somebody say it. Our praise is about to scare the devil. Come on, some of your young people say, our praise is about to scare the devil. One, two, one, two, ready.
when I think about Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can dance, 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 song. When I think about Jesus, what is up for me? When I think about Jesus, how we set me free, I can dance, 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 dance all night, 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 all about Jesus, I can shout, I can shout, 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 all night, all night, all night, all night, all night, all night. Think about Jesus, what for me? When I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can sing, 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 sing all night, all night, all night, all night. If you're not ashamed to praise the Lord, let me see you stomp your feet. If you're not ashamed to praise the Lord, let me see you wave your hands. If you're not ashamed to praise the Lord, let me see you leap for joy. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. Wave your hands, leap for joy. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. Wave your hands, leap for joy. Leave for joy, 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 leave for joy. Bishops up here jumping higher some than some of you young folks back there. I need some of these older guys to go grab a hand of a young person and show them how to praise God in this place. I need some of the others, go grab a hand of some of these young boys. You see these three young boys right here? Somebody go grab one of their hands right now. We're gonna show these young boys how to worship God. We're gonna show these young men how to praise Him. We're gonna show these young men how to shout in here. One, two, three. When you think about Judas, what is up for me? Think about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can shout, 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 shout. All night, 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 all night. When you think about Judas, what is up for me? When you think about Judas, I can dance, I can dance, 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 all night.
there's something stirring in here. I got a praise, I got a praise, and I gotta get it up. I got a praise. I, I got a praise, I got a praise. See, when I get to thinking about Jesus, I think about how my dad had stage four cancer, but God rescued him and healed his body. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, I begin to think about where I was. And if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, how he covered me and he saved me and pulled me out of darkness into his marvelous life, I get something just starts to get stirred up in me. I, I gotta praise, praise, and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. Don't just say it, do it. I gotta praise and I got, yeah, 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 I gotta praise. I, I gotta praise. I gotta praise. Oh! Somebody shout. Somebody shout, but hallelujah. Somebody shout, hallelujah. On the count of three, somebody shout, hallelujah. One, two, three. I want somebody to scream, the devil is a liar. One, two, three, the devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The Holy Ghost is here. Why don't you just lift up your hands and just say the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say something sweet to him. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Halabasata. It's a table that you prepared for me. The presence of my enemies. Will you lay out your instructions there for me? This is how I fight my battles. Oh, 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 oh. there's a table, Lord, that you prepare for me. Uh, in the prayer. Of my enemies, will you lay out your instructions there for me? This is how I fight my battles. Come on, somebody up to lift your voice and say it. I, I believe you overcome, and I will live my song. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Come on, declare it. This is how I fight my battle. This is how. This is how I fight my battle. This is how. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is 
Mercy for me. Show my weapons of my praise and my testimony. This is how I fight my battle. Whoa. And I, and I will overcome and I will live my song. service, but I just feel so impressed in the Holy Ghost right now. There are moments in a service where God just begins to trouble the water as we, we heard about in, in the book, in the Bible, but this, this is an open door. Somebody shout an open door. Is there anybody that's been asking God for anything? Is there anybody that knows that you've been praying for a breakthrough in your life, in the life of your family, in the life of your children? Is there anybody that's been praying for a breakthrough? Oh, there's more than that. Come on, lift up your hand and testify. This isn't the moment to let somebody else pray their prayer. This is the moment for you to pray your prayer. 
God has come down to sit in the midst of his praises. And it's time for somebody to get aggressive. Some, this time for a man to get determined and passionate to touch the throne of God. Lift up your hands all over this house and lift your voice and begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. Begin to let the Holy Ghost come out of your mouth. Begin to praise him right now. Begin to press in the spirit. The victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to Jesus. Somebody lift up your hands and just begin to thank the Lord right now. Victory belongs to Jesus. Oh, somebody ought to be talking to him louder than that. Somebody ought to be raising your voice louder than that. Oh, you need him more than that. Somebody ought to be hungry right now. Somebody ought to be desperate right now. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. atmosphere of faith anything could happen why don't you go ahead right now find somebody and just start praying with somebody right now the Lord is doing something right now the presence of the Lord is in this place hallelujah healing can take place breakthrough can take place deliverance can take place go ahead right now find somebody and pray with them
Hallelujah. The Lord is interrupting the service. He's disrupting our plan simply to minister to you right now. So get your breakthrough right now. Get your healing right now. Get your deliverance right now. not done yet. The Lord is not done yet. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you what is taking place right now. In case anybody is confused, let me tell you what is taking place right now. But before I do that, let me, let me just say, the thing that made David great wasn't the fact that he was a great warrior, but it was the fact that he was a great praiser. The Lord inhabits the praise of his people, O oh Israel, O oh church. And because of our praise, the Lord is inhabiting this place. Therefore, as was mentioned, the water is troubled because of our praise, oh man. Therefore, healing can take place now. Deliverance can take place now. Hallelujah. 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 Before we move on, why don't you find somebody else to pray for? Hallelujah. Before we move on, just find somebody else and pray for them right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, pray by faith, uh, believing and trusting that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Uh, come on, go ahead and pray right now. Uh, hallelujah. He's the Alpha and the Mega, the beginning and the end. Uh, there is nothing impossible for our God.
Hallelujah. And now that you prayed, I want you to go ahead and just shout. Shout for the victory. Shout. Hallelujah. Deliverance took place right now. Healing took place right now. Men were strengthened right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you'll grab a hold of what God just did, you will not leave here as you came in. Yes, have your will, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody needs to shout in here and tell the devil he's a liar right now. Somebody needs to lift your voice and shout in this atmosphere. On the count of three, lift up your voice. One, two, three. Hallelujah. The devil's a liar. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This is a microcosm of some of y'all's life. Every time the devil wants to come in and stir something up, you quiet and just start to do a little golf clap. But I wonder if there's any apostolic, bold apostolic men in this room that wants to lift up their voice in faith and tell the devil he's a liar. Somebody shout in this house. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. We've got the victory. We've got the victory tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Brothers, as I said yesterday, we need to be the hottest burning flame on planet Earth. But you know what that requires? Overflowing with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shout out unto the Lord one more time. Praise God. Praise God. Clap your hands as you've been seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. You shall not die, but you shall live and declare. 
Hallelujah. We're declaring today that God is good. We're declaring today that God is awesome. We're declaring today that God is a deliverer. Anybody been delivered today? Hallelujah. Praise God. When the Lord interrupts, it is a wonderful thing. I know we have our programs and our schedules, but when the Lord interrupts, that means the Lord loves us so much that he will interrupt the service just for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm excited about what's happening at this men's conference. Uh, hallelujah. I know we're going to leave this place ignited. We're going to leave this place strengthened. We're going to leave this place ready to turn our world upside down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to ask our host pastor to come and greet the church. Amen. I'm going to ask our host pastor, Pastor Bennett, to come and greet the church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you feel the power? There's just something about when, when men of God come together. The foundations of hell are shaken when men praise God. Can we just go ahead and praise him one more time? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Isn't he wonderful? Praise God. I just want to share a quick testimony before I step down. See, last November, I, I went to Jamaica last November, and I met this lady that um, had a ministry on, online, a uh, um, she was, she had the Holy Ghost, but she was Trinitarian. Okay. And so, um, when we, were back, when we went back this last time, Monday, she came and at her door and asked my wife if she, if she could speak to me. And when I went out to speak to her, she opened the conversation like this. Do you believe in rebaptism? Well, well that's an opening <laughs> for a Bible study <laughs> on baptism. So I gave her one. And while I'm giving her this Bible study, she's nodding her head. She's nodding her head and smiling. And she said, well, I've been studying the scriptures. Of course, she should have been doing that all along. <laughs> and, um, and I see that I, I should be baptized in Jesus' name. So I told my bishop, and he said, nah, you've been baptized already. You shouldn't be baptized again. But what you're saying made me know that I need to be baptized again. Will you baptize me? So I said, yeah, I'll baptize you. So, so she said, um, okay, I'll call you 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. I said, man, that's kind of early, but okay. <laughs> okay. So I got up, got my phone at, at, at 6 o'clock, and I'm there waiting for her to call. She didn't call me. Didn't see her all day Tuesday. All day Wednesday, I didn't see her. No, I got to come, come back. I'm leaving Thursday. And I didn't see all. So Thursday morning, about 10 o'clock, she showed up. And she said, you know, she, she's a project manager for a, for a building thing. And so she said, I had to leave. I had to be out of town. So I didn't call you. Can you go baptize me now? Now I'm getting ready to leave. <laughs> so can, I, can you baptize me? I said, okay, let's go. We just head down to the, to the beach. Baptize her in Jesus' name. And, and praise God. No. So, so now we have an apostolic online ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you, the Lord is moving in these last days. He's opening eyes. And he's revealing himself. Oh, praise. Can we just give God thanks? Hallelujah. 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 I'm sure if we opened it up tonight, there would be so many testimonies of the goodness of God. One of the exciting things that I see happening right now in our nation, and I believe it's happening around the world, is young people are expressing a hunger for God. 
We've all heard about what's been happening on some of the campuses around the nation, particularly Bible-type colleges, Asbury University, and it's spread to many of the places. Not apostolic schools, but people who are hungry. They're tired of dead religion. And I believe that this generation, the millennials, the Gen Zers, as we call them, uh, the next generation beyond that, uh, and even the alpha uh, generation, I think that's what they call it, the, the first one. Yeah, it's the next one after the Gen Zers. <laughs> they are ready. They're ripe. When I saw all the young men praying tonight, I said, God, give me some preachers out of this group. Give me some church planters. Give us some evangelists, some, not me, but give the Lord's kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? And I believe that God is calling. The best time for you to respond to that call is when you're young. Yes. Hallelujah. The Bible said it's good for a young man, for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. That is, respond to the call. And God got me when I was just a young whippersnapper. And here I am, an older whippersnapper now. And I'm enjoying it. I love men's conference. It's the place to be. And I just want to encourage us all to be men of God, whatever your calling is. Not everybody's called to a pulpit ministry. I know that. But we do need more men responding to the call to be preachers. And I just say tonight, let's all be the men that God wants us to be. Amen. Looking forward to hearing Brother Graham. Thank you, Brother Mitchell, for setting this up and all the musicians. Such doing such a tremendous job. Brother Morungi spoke this morning. Did a great job for us as well. God bless you. Glory adios. I do apologize because uh, we did promote that there would be Spanish translation today, Friday. Amen. And if there's anybody here that was wondering where is the Spanish translation, amen. We have the equipment. We have everything ready. But our translator got sick. And uh, he's, he was been, he's been searching, searching, trying to find a replacement, and he was not able to. So for that, I do apologize. But I do pray. That for anybody who's having a difficult time comprehending that the Holy Ghost will reveal right here today. Hallelujah. Is, Lord, is the Lord able? We have somebody that can translate and his name is Jesus. Praise God. After service today, there's an opportunity for fellowship. Amen. Hopefully, folks don't need to rush out. Amen. For work tomorrow. Hopefully, you'll be back here tomorrow. But after service, we have an opportunity for fellowship. Amen. There will be food for sale downstairs. Food for sale downstairs. We'll take cash. We'll take card. Amen. And uh, if you don't need to rush out, grab food. Have some time of fellowship. The food will be free for all the pastors. So for all the pastors, the food will be free. It'll be free for our staff, our speakers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but food will be for sale downstairs. And uh, tomorrow, we're going to start here. What time is prayer tomorrow? Amen. 10 a.m. prayer. What time does service begin? 1030. And one of the things we're going to be doing differently tomorrow, uh, usually on Saturday we wrap up with uh, one major, one, one last service. Uh, but tomorrow we're going to, after the praise and worship, we're going to have a split session. And so we're going to have an opportunity to minister to our, our, our young boys, the ages of 10 to 16, downstairs in the fellowship hall while the men will be up here. Because this meeting cannot just be for the men now, but we have to impart to the men who will be. Because the world is already whispering in their ears so we need to get God's word into their heart amen and so tomorrow we'll have a split session the young boys will be downstairs in the fellowship hall and the men we will be up here amen um, we have two videos I'm gonna skip one I will only show one of the video. One of the videos I was going to show, which I will skip, which is probably the one I should show, but I'm going to skip the Father's Day promotion, the Father's Day offering promotional video. Amen. And uh, uh, Father's Day, you already know, um, it's an opportunity to give into the kingdom to support men's ministry. We're not going to show that video that Father, uh, I'm curious, anybody know when Father's Day is? Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, we never really know when Father's Day is until probably the day before, right? <laughs> but Father's Day is going to be June 18th, June 18th, and that's an opportunity to give into men's ministry. We're going to skip that video. We do want to show one video, though. It's going to be our for uh, something different we're going to do this year for our men's retreat. So if you could get that video ready, amen, and go ahead and show it. We're going to show a video for our men's retreat, which is going to be this year. So go ahead and show that video. And I probably threw them off by, ah, there we go. If we could get some sound, some sound with the video. All right, if we could start it over. With. Praise God. Praise God. This year, we're going to have a men's retreat where we're going to gather together, have some time of fellowship, have some time of strengthening. Amen. And just just draw nigh unto God. Amen. I'm excited. It is the location where the uh, youth have their youth camp. Uh, Praise God, praise God. But unlike the youth, we'll stay in a spot that has electricity and run. No. <laughs> Amen. But I'm excited about it. We'll, we'll promote it some more. Amen. But we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to having an awesome time in the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm looking forward to that, Brother Mitchell. You know, I, we get to gather like this, but I don't get to develop a relationship with you brothers. This is going to be an awesome opportunity for us to get to know each other. Now, I'm, I'm here right now to, to give the offering. I love being a man. And with being a man comes responsibility. You know, I have a family. I, I have three kids, three girls. And they're watching daddy. What does daddy do? 
We can look in the Bible and see what dads did. And they gave. They all gave. How did Cain and Abel know to give? Daddy showed them. Look at Noah. As soon as he got off that boat, he gave. He gave a sacrifice. Abraham was told to give his son. His son was right there. Isaac knows whatever God calls him to give. You must give. All because of daddy. Daddies, we got to show that to our families. We give. We give of our offerings. We give of our tithes. You know, I, I, I pray one day my girls will marry a good apostolic man. But how on earth will they know who to marry? What kind of man to marry? If daddy doesn't give the example, daddy has to give the example. I don't want them to marry a man that doesn't give. I don't want them to marry a man that doesn't know the word, that doesn't know enough to give as God tells us to do. Brothers, can we, can we, can we just stand right now? This is the portion of the service where we can really really be a man a man gives we give as we worship it is a form of worship to God I love being a man as I said God has given me a job he's given me that responsibility to work and with that comes the privilege to give Oh, Jesus, we love you in this place. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. And we come before you as men right now, Lord. As a man with a heart. We love you, Jesus. And we want to follow your word as your word directs us to. That we will give an offering, Lord. We will stretch ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the men in this district and the love that they have. Oh, God, as we come before you now, we come before you with a joyous, happy, loving heart. And we give to you right now, Jesus, as a form of worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, let us go before him. Let us go. Somebody say anything can happen.
declare your power. We declare your power. We declare your power. We declare your power. We declare your power. In Jesus' name, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen the moment that you walk in. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen the moment that you walk in. He's here right now. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Somebody say right now. He now. Somebody say here. He right here right now. Deliverance is in the room. Hey, right now. Oh, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The moment you walk in. Anything can happen. Oh. The moment that you walk. The moment that you walk in. Why don't you just lift your hands and tell the Lord anything can happen. God, I'm ready for it. I'm open to it right now. translator <laughs> we now have a translator praise God praise God some of our brothers already got the headset we do have our brother in the back that's going to translate so if anybody else need uh, to be translated into Spanish just go to the back and you'll get one of the headset isn't the Lord wonderful praise God what an awesome word we heard last night what an awesome word we heard last night. My goodness, my goodness. Hallelujah. Do we have any boat builders here? Praise God. Praise God. Without any further delay, Brother Graham, come take your liberty in the Lord. I would... Um I want to take it upon myself tonight to offer you a, a bit of advice. And um, that is that if, that if everything that's happened here tonight has made you uncomfortable, if the exuberant worship and protracted praise has troubled you somewhat, I would offer this friendly bit of advice. Don't go to heaven. Um, because eternity is a long time to be miserable. And, and I think I've got it figured out that for some folk, they're only going to enjoy about a half hour's worth. Because the Bible does tell us that there's silence by the space of about a half an hour. I think that's because we walk in there and when we see him, we just kind of go. And so for about 30 minutes, it, it, you could hear a mouse licking ice. But along about minute 31, when we realize we're never going to be sick another day, we're never going to be tempted another time, Every trial and every trouble is behind us, and we're going to spend the rest of eternity in that 
I promise you in that moment, nobody's going to have to beg us to do anything. There will be thunderous praise, the sound of many waters as we declare his majesty. Amen. Amen. It is so wonderful to be with you, and I am just feel very blessed. Now, I, I know it, it's a quarter to nine. I, 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 Mickey's, Mickey's big hand is on the nine, and his little hand is on the nine, so I, I got it. Uh, but uh, I, I just want to minister to you a little while here tonight. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 1. Thank you to this great praise team. And I, and I know how we do it, and I, I, I've mentioned his name multiple times, and I honor Brother Crowder for his gift and the way he has committed that to God, but he ain't up here alone. And I honor these musicians and singers that have come and given their time to involve themselves and give of their talents as well. I actually ask a, a famed conductor one time, Leonard uh, uh, Bernstein, the famed uh, orchestra, orchestral con conductor, what was the hardest instrument in the orchestra to play? And the thought would have been perhaps that it was the, the first violinist, the concert violinist, the, the, the individual who sits immediately to the conductor's left. He or she is the one to whom all the other instruments tune at the, at the preface of the concert that individual plays a note and they all tune their instruments to that. Uh, he or she is the one who stands and shakes the conductor's hand when he enters and when he leaves. It gets all the attention. It, but Mr. Bernstein said, oh no, no, the most difficult instrument to play is second violin. Because he said, they've practiced just as many hours. They've put in just as much time. They probably are just as skilled but they didn't get chose to sit in that chair. And they'll never get the notoriety of that one. And they'll never have the spotlight on them like that one. But if they play well, it makes everybody sound better. In the kingdom of God, there is something about second violinists that are gifted and talented and are willing to sing there instead of sing here. I'll go one step further. Are willing to sing there and there and there, even if you never sing here. And I, I honor the second violinist tonight. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, Paul says, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Yes. Very difficult words found in verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, yes. it is hid to those who are less fortunate. No, it is hid to those who are, that's a tough word right there. If they don't hear the gospel, they're lost. If our gospel is hid from them, they're lost. In whom, he says, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, Paul says, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. My message. My message title tonight is this, you're a vessel, not a vault. You're a vessel, not a vault. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I hope perhaps the PowerPoint file I sent, do we have those images available to you, are awesome and grossly underpaid. You can throw the first slide up there, I'll just cue you as we need to go through them. They are some of the heaviest 
and most secure structures built by man. We call them vaults. Literally, in some cases, hundreds of tons of steel and concrete hear this statement that exists for one reason, the value of what is kept beyond those doors. Give me the next slide. Consider this. <laughs> it will. In New York City, just blocks from Wall Street, sits a vault with 25% of the world's current known gold reserves in it. 540,000 bars of gold sit behind a 90-ton steel door in a vault that is 80 feet underground cut out of bedrock. Why? Because it's some $270 billion worth of gold, 98% of which, regrettably, is foreign-owned. <laughs> but the reason for that is this next slide. This is Fort Knox in Kentucky. Four fences surround this building, two of which are electrified. The granite walls at which you look are four feet thick held together with 750 tons of reinforcing steel. Armed sentinels walk the perimeter of this building 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Within that building, there is a 22-ton vault door. Surrounding that building are all the soldiers stationed there on Fort Knox, usually around 30,000 of them, I am told. If somehow you manage to get past the 30,000 soldiers and the four fences and the armed sentinels and the granite walls and you made your way down there to the vault door, you would have to bring with you a number of individuals, each of whom knows a part of the combination. There is no living human being who knows it all. Why? Because there are contained the bulk of this nation's gold reserves. They will not say how much, just that it is roughly 3% of all the gold that has ever been refined in human history. But it's not just money, my dear brothers. Next slide, please. Travel with me to Cheyenne Mountain, Wyoming. Meant to be the military command headquarters in the event of an all-out nuclear attack. Home of what is known as NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command. The men and women who work there do so behind two of these doors. That, my dear friends, you're looking at is a, this blows my mind, a 25-ton blast door, which is designed to withstand the direct hit of a 30-megaton nuclear weapon. Now, to put that into perspective, the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima would have to be 1,429 times bigger to breach that door. The site is buried under some 2,000 feet of mountain granite. The air has to be piped in, but it is considered some of the purest in the world, having been processed for chemical, biological, and nuclear contaminants. Why? Because our command and control structures for the military are there. Key defense personnel and systems operate there, and somebody decided it was worth whatever you had to pay to keep those things safe. You see? That's what vaults do. They are designed in consideration of the value of what you're putting inside there. So let me remind you of something tonight, and you can chalk this up to preacher talk if you want to. But all the gold in Fort Knox and all the gold in the Federal Reserve Bank doesn't equal the treasure that happens when one crack addict goes down in water in Jesus' name and comes up talking in tongues. I'm sorry, I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy. The day that you were born again of water and spirit, you got a treasure that's greater than anything this world has to offer. I don't know who is the wealthiest person here in this life, but a homeless bum that talks in tongues has got a treasure that is greater than anything this world has to offer. you'd shout like you believe that.
I tried to Google and figure it out. What's the most expensive subject, substance known to man? And I found out that most people will say it's antimatter. I don't know what that is. The more I read, the more confused I got. If there's a nuclear physicist here, I'm sure you can explain it all to us so we could all be confused. It requires a massive particle accelerator, a giant tube about a mile around built by your tax dollars. And somehow they send one atom flying that way. And they send another atom flying that way at almost the speed of light. And somehow, they managed to steer those two atoms into a head-on collision. Must be a woman driving. I can do it here. I can't, I can't, I can't do that anyplace else and I get away with that here. Some of y'all are even scared to laugh. They're not here, gentlemen. You can go ahead and laugh. It's, uh, I saw somebody go. Is that funny? I don't know if that's funny. She's not here to tell me if that's funny. <laughs> of course, they're going to poison my food now downstairs, but that's a different topic. And somehow they managed to get those two atoms to collide. And when they do, they tell me that something is produced on a subatomic level called antimatter. It only lasts a fraction of a split second, and then it goes away again. Your tax dollars at work. But they say if you applied the math with what it costs to build that and operate it, that could you somehow keep it, antimatter would cost $2,000 trillion an ounce. I can't figure that one out. Elon Musk can't afford antimatter. And yet I tell you in the Holy Ghost. When your sins were washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ, when you came up out of that water, does anybody remember or is it just an old memory that kind of faded away? I'm telling you the day that you were born again of water and spirit, God put something in you that's more valuable than anything science can do. I'm just trying to help you look back a minute and be grateful. You have a treasure. You have a And if you ever lose this, you can't replace it. If it ever goes away, there's nothing else to take its place. This is the greatest thing in your life to be a Jesus name apostolic. You have a treasure. You want to know what it is? Thank you for asking. Colossians 1.27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Oh, my dear brother, when you drive home tomorrow, Jesus is in you. When you go to church on Sunday, Jesus is in you. When you go to work on Monday, Jesus when the doctor scares you, Jesus is in you. When the bank account is empty, Jesus is in you. When everything is against you, you have Christ in you. And I tell you, that's better than gold. That's better than silver. That's better than diamonds. Because when everything here has burned up, that treasure will still remain. It has value. It has worth. It can't be replaced. I just want to remind you a minute how blessed you are. How blessed you are. You've got a treasure. It may never show up on a Forbes list. But if your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, you've got a treasure. We better, we better guard ourselves from measuring our worth as men based on how much we've got, what kind of house we live in, what kind of car we drive. Honey, where I'm heading, they use gold for asphalt. So who cares which neighborhood you live in down here? I'm getting a mansion built up there. Who cares what kind of vehicle you drive down here? I'm going up riding on a trumpet blast. I'm telling you, I've got a treasure that cannot be replicated.
Now, now watch, watch, watch. A treasure must be guarded. Certain steps are taken when you understand the value of a treasure. You do this naturally. You might leave an old muddy pair of work boots on your front porch overnight. You ain't leaving the keys to your new car. Because you perceive and understand the value. The way you treat it is measured by how you value it. You're walking out to your car tonight, parked out the street someplace, reach your pocket, pull your keys out, and a penny falls out of your pocket, rolls as it will do to the geometric center of your vehicle, and then lays down. I'm guessing there's not one of you going belly first on the pavement to get that penny back. If you are, I will buy your dinner after church because you're having a hard time. If, on the other hand, you pull your keys out and a $100 bill falls out of your pocket. Now, you know what that means? It means you got on somebody else's britches. That's what that means. But anyway, that $100 bill flutters and then nestles in the center of your vehicle. Well, no, not your vehicle, because then you just move it. A stranger's vehicle? Dude, you're face planting. I don't care if you get grease on your suit. You're reaching. You're stretching. I mean, you're doing everything you can to get to that. And here's the deal. Nobody's going to laugh at you. Well, yeah, we will, but that's... But nobody... You don't, you don't care if they make fun of you. You don't care if they say that's not necessary. You don't care if they try to tell you other people aren't doing that. You're just going to say, but I understand how valuable that is, and I'm going to get that back in my hand. That's why I'm telling you, if you understand the value of what it means to be an apostolic, there's no length too great to go to keep this thing in your hands. Come on. I don't care how I need to live, how I need to dress, how I need to talk, what I need to avoid. You just tell me, Pastor, I love this so much. I'm going to keep my hands on this. Oh, don't, don't you sit there and look at me and dare me to preach. I see people that throw this thing away for a casual little temptation. I see people throw this away because they get their feelings hurt. You don't love it like I love it. You can't get this out of my hands. I know how valuable this is. This can't be replaced. And how I treat it is determined by how I value it. I have a safe deposit box in my bank where I did for many years. Paid 100 bucks a year to have a safe deposit box there. I keep some stuff in it, life insurance policy, passports, some stock certificates, you know, stuff. I have never walked in that bank <laughs> with a Piggly Wiggly bag. That's a grocery store down south. If you ain't ever, isn't that the dumbest name for a grocery store? Piggly Wiggly. It really does exist. <laughs> I'm going to shop and save whatever you got. I've never walked in there with a plastic bag and told that lady, hey, I need to get my safe deposit box. Oh, certainly, sir. Uh, do you need a private room or just, I said, no, I just, a few things I want to throw in there. Great. And pull out of that bag a burnout light bulb, a broken shoestring, and a spatula we melted on the stove. What are you doing? They're going to get me medical attention. What, what are you doing? I'm going to put these in there. No, you don't take steps like that for something of no value. But if instead I walk in there with my Piggly Wiggly bag, that lady says, you know, I just, here, I, I want to put this in her. And I pull out about 100 original Google stock shares. Ain't nobody going to ask me, why are you putting those in there? All they're going to say is, why haven't you done that already? They're going to look at me and wonder why I haven't been more careful with something that's so valuable. Nobody's going to mock you for taking care of something you love. 
I'm going to say it in English. If you don't respond, I'm going to come out there and sweat on you. If you love this, you're going to take care of it. And you're not going to trade it away for some flirtation of some lady on the job. And you're not going to trade it away because a charismatic made fun of you. And you're not going to trade it away because somebody offended you. And you're not going to trade it away because there's an easier path. You're going to say, I love this so much. I'm going to protect this. I'm going to keep this safe. Uh, there is no protection too great to keep this safe. I'm going to go on record. I'm 58 years old, for those of you that are wondering. Next year, I catch up my IQ. <laughs> I plan to be an apostolic when I'm 60. I plan to be an apostolic when I'm 70. I plan to be an apostolic if I make it to 80. I plan to be an apostolic when the trumpet sounds. I plan to go to heaven and live there. You can't... I'm sorry. You can't treat me bad enough to make me leave. You can't hurt me enough to make me stop. You can't cause me to put this treasure down and walk away. I love this so much. I love this so much. This is a treasure. I'm going to keep this safe. Pastor, however I need to live, however I need to dress, whatever you tell me to stop, if it keeps this treasure safe, that's what I'm going to do. All right. All right. All right. Now, let me sit now, now. But here is the truth tonight. So this treasure is to be guarded. But this treasure is not to be hoarded. It is amazing to me to understand with the incredible value of this treasure where God put it. Because he did not put it behind strong reinforced doors. The Bible says he chose to invest his treasure. Next slide. In these earthen vessels. Now, my brothers, as you read through the scriptures, you will find vessels of varying worth. You'll find vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of fine copper. You'll read about vessels of ivory, of brass, of iron, vessels of precious, of precious wood, and even vessels of stone. But all those are durable materials. They will last. Generations can pass with those vessels remaining. But God put his treasure in earthen vessels. Simple, fragile items made by the potter. Potter's vessels which can be so easily marred. We can trip going up the steps sometimes. No, we, we do. Pause a moment on that. You're exactly right, sir. It's not an excuse for tripping. It's not an excuse to fall down. I'm going to tell you one of the greatest definitions of grace anybody ever gave me. This is not a theological definition. This is a practical definition. Somebody looked at me one time after I had made a mistake. My pastor looked at me and said, son, grace is God's permission to fall forward. You may have fallen, but at least fall toward him. <laughs> These fragile, simple, imperfect, not all that attractive, cheap vessels. They're rather cheap unless, of course, your wife buys them at Pottery Barn. <laughs> Never understood that. My wife will go to Pottery Barn... Until I'm bold, she's not here. <laughs> Buy these expensive, for some reason, pottery vessels and bring in our house and put weeds in it <laughs> so we can take allergy medication. I don't understand. <laughs> anyway, they're just, they're cheap. They're not, they're not all that special. If you break one, you just go to the potter and get another one. They're disposable. 
Now, I realize we don't use them today. I rather doubt any of you on Monday morning before you're going to, going to work are going to eat your frosted flakes out of a vessel made by a potter, unless your wife just happens to do that for a hobby. We don't use them today, so I needed an example that would depict the same idea in our culture. That's, that's what I got. Just plain old ordinary styrofoam cups. You can buy 10,000 of them at Costco for eleven ninety five. I mean, it's just, it's nothing. I, I text Brother Mitchell today and asked if I could have one. I didn't feel bad. I, I didn't figure it was going to break the bank. If it is, I'll buy your dinner afterwards tonight. If that, you know, you and the dude searching for the penny. I don't figure it. it it's five cents. Well, it is beta petroleum. It's five dollars. <laughs> just helping you with the gas prices up here in the Northeast. All I'm saying is there's nothing that special about it. It's just a simple styrofoam cup. We have this treasure. If, if, if Paul had written this today, we have this treasure in styrofoam cups that the excellency of the power may be of God. It's not us. Uh, let, let me do it this way. If I can get this to sit there without spilling or something silly, I, that scares me. Pray, saints. Uh, I'm done. All right. If you came to my house and my wife served you tea, next slide, in this, she wouldn't because you're a guy. Okay, we're out in the garage talking about hunting, but our wives are drinking tea in the living room, okay? And if my wife served tea in this, I know what your wife would say. It would go like this. Ow. If, if anybody makes a hose joke right now, I'm going to throw this microphone at you, okay? Oh, that's lovely. What print is that? How long have you had that? How long has that been in your family? Did your grandmother give that to you? How many place settings do you have, right? That's what's going to go on. If she serves tea in this, next slide, ain't nobody going to go, oh, how long have you had it? <laughs> how, how many place settings do you have? 10,000. We just got back from Costco. I got boxes of it. How many generations has that been in your family? About an hour and a half. I got it this afternoon, right? Nope. Okay, I got you laughing now. I'll bust you in the chops. I'll tell you what, the only questions that would get asked if we serve tea in that is, what kind of tea is that? That's the best thing I ever tasted. How can I get some of that? See, because when the vessel is like this, it's not about the vessel. It's about the contents. Come on, somebody. It's not about us. It's about the contents. It's not about me. It's about church. I want him to say, what is that I feel? That tastes really good. How can I get some of that? I don't care if they remember my name. I don't care if they remember your name. But dear God, let them feel something so that they are arrested by the contents. Jesus, help us to decrease. It's not about our opinion. It's not about our pleasure. It's not about our ideas. It's not about what we want. It's all about the contents. That's what I would have you note today, my dear brethren. God did not place this treasure behind locked doors, never to be seen or admired. He placed it in common vessels so the thirsty could taste what, what we tasted and have their own thirst satisfied. See, I... 
There's a lot of you I've never met, but I know you because the Bible tells me who you are. Let me read it to you. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. I'm sorry if you're insulted by this. Jesus wrote it. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and base things of the world, things which are despised of God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are what? That no got nothing to glory in, sir. I've got nothing to boast in except the cross of Calvary. The only reason I'm here today is the grace of God. It's the contents that came into my life. It's the treasure that he filled me with. It's not about the vessel. It's about the treasure. He placed this in a vessel, not a vault, because he never intended for us to keep this treasure. It was meant to be poured out. What, what good is a vault if you can't get to the treasure? You can be seated a minute. When we first got married, my wife worked in a bank, and she was a teller, when she was a receptionist, she became a teller, she became a teller supervisor. One of her responsibilities at the bank was to lock the vault every night. And it had a mechanized keypad thing that he locked it with. And she had to set how many hours it would be locked. See, you dudes on the second row, you're going, why didn't they just program that? <laughs> no computers. <laughs> So she would set the thing for like 10 hours, you know, or whatever. One particular night, her finger slipped. She locked it for 20 hours. So that means when the bank opened up the next day, nobody could get to the vault. The tellers couldn't get to their money trays. People couldn't get their safe deposit box. I told her, I said, well, baby, there's got to be a way to open that. She said, there's no way to open it. I said, there has to be a way to open it. I, I said... I, I said, you know, she said, we got water in there. We got, there's air. It's not, it's, it's ventilated. You know, I said, God, so what if somebody's in there and had a heart attack? She said, we'd know where to find them. <laughs> she said, you can't open it. Guy came in that day. He and his wife were flying out for their 25th anniversary to Paris. One of their passports out of their safe deposit box. That's what he said. He was not happy in the least. And do you know that he was not made any happier when they said to him, hey, they're safe. <laughs> we know right where they are. It did him no good if he can't get to it. Wait, wait. Our church, when we built our new building, we were pretty financially strapped. So we used to have these fundraisers called truckload sales. Now, if you're not familiar with this concept, let me explain it to you. Walmart will take goods back for almost any reason. You can return goods to Walmart for about any reason at all. Yep. People use them once. Go camping in a tent. Only want to go camping once, buy a tent, use it, take it back. That's dishonest, but they do it. They'll take it back. Now, some stuff they can sell, some they can't. The stuff they can't sell because it's broken or it's dirty or whatever, they wholesale it out, and you can buy an entire tractor trailer load of returned Walmart goods for, you know, ten or twelve thousand dollars. You have to go through it, throw away all the broken stuff, fix what you can, test it all. We put it all out in our gym, a big old thing, and then you market it retail and you sell it half off. Because people are they think they're getting a bargain. We used to lovingly call it the cheapo depot. I was walking through one time, we're getting all set up, and I noticed sitting there in a box, brand new, is a safe, a home safe. Boom. I get to reading on that thing. That rascal's good to like 1,800 degrees in the event of a house fire. It's good to like 200 feet underwater in case like we ever get hit by a tsunami in St. Louis. <laughs> and I get to read, it's got... 
It's got holes in the bottom of it that you, you go down in your basement. Well, a basement's there. And you go down the concrete and you drill and you mount bolts in the concrete and you set this over it and then you, you bolt it down to the inside so nobody can carry it off. Well, this thing was $200 retail, which means I can buy it for 100 bucks. I told you earlier I'm paying 100 bucks for my safe deposit box. I'm a fiscal genius. I'm like, well, I'll buy that. I'll put that in my basement. I'll put my stuff in there. I'll tell the bank, you ain't getting any more money from me. And in one year, I'll make my money back. I am bright. One problem. Rascal that brought that back, brought it back locked and didn't include the combination. You're looking at the proud owner of a safe that I've had for a decade and have never opened. I have no earthly clue what's in it. Probably nothing, but we don't know. You might be looking at the richest man in the state of Massachusetts right now. That thing might have bearer bonds. It might have Google stocks. Or Let's pause for a moment and just pray, shall we? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what's in there. All I know is this. I've never been able to call my mortgage company and say, hey, I ain't going to send you a check this month. I got something in a safe. I don't care if there's, there could be antimatter in there. I don't know. But whatever is in there does me no good as long as the door of access is closed to me. So why, why, why do you keep it? Because Jesus loves me. And I am persuaded that one day at the church I used to pastor, we're going to baptize a safe cracker. <laughs> and just before Calvary completely robs him of his past life, I'm going to invite him over for dinner, <laughs> feed him good, and offer him 10% of whatever he gets out of that safe. You just... Laugh at me if you will, but when I go missing and you can't find me, I'm living in the Bahamas someplace. <laughs> I can't help anybody with what's in there. Nobody benefits from what's in there. I get no good. Can I be as I'm trying to be gentle with you right now? But your neighbors do not benefit from a treasure in a vault. You hear what I'm telling you? Your co-workers don't get deliverance if you keep your treasure in a vault. Your family doesn't get any benefit if you keep your treasure in a vault. Your, your neighbors don't get deliverance if your treasure is in a vault. So God said, I didn't put this thing in a vault. I put it in a simple earthen vessel so that it can be poured out. I preach to you men today. Listen to me. The Lord spoke to me sitting over a while ago, and he said, my people are quick to call on me, but slow to respond when I call to them. And then our superintendent gets up and says, we need people answering the call to preach. We need people answering the call to plant churches. You say, I'm not ready for that yet. Okay, how about a call to teach a home Bible study? How about a call to start a P7 club in your high school? How about a call to go to the prison and preach to the to, in the chapel? How about somebody go to the nursing home and preach to those dear elders that don't have very much time left? I'm just telling you, we can't keep this treasure inside a vault. God put it in a vessel. Oh, I know. See, you like it a lot better when I preach about all the stuff God's done for you than when I preach about what he wants you to do for somebody else. But he didn't give you that treasure just so you could sit on a pew and dip your finger in it every Sunday and say, man, I'm so blessed. He gave that to you so you'd pour it out in a Sunday school class and pour it out in a Bible club and pour it out in a home Bible study and pour it out in your community and pour it out to your neighbors and pour it out to your family. I plead with you today, sir, not to be a vault that your neighbors walk, dr watch, drive out of your neighborhood every Sunday and wonder what's inside. I charge you in the Holy Ghost, men, pour it out because God didn't put it in a vault. He put it in a vessel. You be seated one more minute. I'll finish right here. 
as cheap as that thing is. As unspecial as it is. If we could, for just the purposes of this illustration, there's a little water in there, not much, I put a little in there. If we could eliminate the consideration of evaporation, let's just pretend that doesn't happen. It's sealed. Let's just pretend it's sealed. As cheap as it is, if I came back here in a year, the water would still be in that vessel. If I came back here in 10 years, the water would still be in that vessel. In fact, if I came back in 100 years, that organ would probably rot away out from under it before that vessel would give up its contents if it is left undisturbed. And so it occurs to me, my dear friends, pastor, or pastor, please don't throw anything at me. I'll pay for whatever it takes to clean it up. But it occurs to me, my brothers, he will if you'll hear with the ears of the Spirit, God's about to speak to you. The treasure, as simple as these vessels are, the treasure only comes out under two circumstances. If we bow or if we're broken. And you can't figure out why God broke you. You can't figure out why God let you go through that thing that scarred you. You can't figure out why God took you through that thing that hurt you so bad. I'll tell you why. Because that's where the treasure comes out. It is your scar that lets the treasure flow out of you. It's your hurt that lets the treasure flow out of you. If we don't bow, he will break us. But he's going to get this treasure out of us. I wish you'd get up and throw your hands in the air right now and say, God, I accept my purpose. I didn't like the scar, but God, if you can use my hurts to reach somebody with the gospel, then I'm okay with that. God, I bow myself to your will. I bow myself to your calling. I bow myself to be a soul winner. I bow myself to be a worshiper. No, 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 keep praying, keep praying. And while you're praying, I wish some people, I wish some of you men would get on your face somewhere, either at your chair or up here at the altar. I wish some of you get up here and put your face down and say, God, it's been years since I want a soul. It's been years since I want a Bible study. God, you've been talking to me about starting a preaching point, and I've been resisting it, but God, this treasure is in a vessel. God, you talked to me about being a church planner. You talked to me about starting a P7 club in high school. You talked to me about starting a Bible club on my factory floor. You talked to me about reaching my neighbors with a community event on my cul-de-sac. You talked to me about talking to son. You told me. You spoke to me. But I've kept this treasure inside a vault. And it's time I become a vessel. I'm done preaching. This altar time is yours, but I pray you would with fervency call out to God. Please don't just put your head down and be silent right now. Your neighbor's eternity could depend on this altar call. Your family's eternity could depend on this altar call. An entire city could have a new church depending on this altar call. You got to bow. You got to bow. You got to bow. You gotta let God break you.
Go ahead, men, please press a little bit, press a little bit. I know this is a harder altar than some because it's not easy to be broken. It's not easy to bow, but that's when the treasure flows out of us. Uh, we got to learn how to linger. We got to learn how to linger. They'll come play music at some point, but don't get don't don't get so hung up on that. You need to talk to God right now. If you don't own a home Bible study, you ought to buy one. Before this week is out, you need to order one and say, God, I'm going to make the investment to buy this, and you open the door, and I'll teach it. But I'm going to pour this out. I can sit here service after service if I'm left undisturbed, but God, I need you to disturb me a little bit. I need you to disturb me a little bit, upset my way a little bit. I got too comfortable, God. Hey, boy, yes, God, I got too comfortable just sitting here. I got too comfortable sitting here. You keep pouring into me, and I'm not doing anything with it, God. There's a difference between guarding this treasure and hoarding it. Come on, my dear brothers, pour it out, 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 pour it out. This vast harvest field. This vast harvest field needs a bunch of men that are walking through life pouring this treasure out. It's not your pastor's job. It's your job, sir. Your pastor pour out his treasure, but you got to pour out yours. Then you fill it up again, and then you pour it out again, and then you fill it up again, and then you pour it out again, and then you fill it up again, and then you pour it out again. I wish you'd connect with somebody near you and pray one for another. Maybe our musicians can come and help us. We, we need to come and help us just a little bit, but I, I need you to minister one to another. This, this, we got to press a little bit further, guys. We got to press a little further. I know you gave a lot of energy and a lot of emotion in the worship service, but I'm telling you, God said they call on me, but now I'm calling on them. We got to respond to His call. We got to respond to His call. Find somebody. Join up with somebody near you. Go across the church and connect with somebody and pray for them. Say, God, I'm asking you to use them for your glory. Pour your treasure into them and then pour your treasure out of them. God, take us to moments where we're broken and we don't fight it because it is out of that brokenness that the treasure will flow. God, take us to moments that we bow. I bow my will. I bow my greed. I bow my priorities. I bow my schedule. I bow my time. I bow my affections. You can use me. If you can use anything, you can use me take my hands Lord take my feet touch my heart Lord speak to me if you can use anything Lord you can use me if you can use anything Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, can use me if you can use anything Lord you can use me if you can use anything Lord you can use me 
my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hand, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hand. my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I surrender Play. 
this powerful word to be left here at the altar. If we are not careful after the tears have flowed, 
we will leave this message here at the altar. But I wonder if we can bring it back home with us. Can we bring it back to our communities? Can we bring it back to our jobs? Can we bring it back to our schools? Hallelujah. This is not meant to be left here at the altar. But can we bring it back home? I will be honest with you. There are times I've heard a message as powerful as that that has impacted me at the moment. And I've come to the altar with tears coming down. Uh, and I made a promise, God, but when I got up, I left it. I left the burden there. I left it there. But can we? Uh, they, they could correct me afterwards, but the Lord is coming back soon. The Lord is coming back soon. The Lord is coming back soon. And we need some broken vessels. Hallelujah. We have a Saturday plan, but the Lord could come back before that. You could be thinking about work or school for Monday, but the Lord can come back before then. I wonder how many people we can reach. Hallelujah. Bishop, I'm going to ask if you come and just pray over us. Just pray over us. said I would that men would pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Let's do that without wrath, without doubting, and say, Lord, I give myself to you. Lord, let the Holy Ghost flow through us. Help us, Lord, to be a vessel. that you can use for your glory. Let me lose myself in you <laughs> so that they can see Jesus in me. I want them to see you in me, Lord. Hallelujah. I give myself to you. I surrender all to you. <laughs> Anoint us. Use us. Go through us. For your glory. For your glory. Hallelujah. I remind you that of those that were given talents, which actually was money. The King James word for talent means some money. Those that took what they had and invested it, they took a risk. It's a little risky investing yourself in other people, but that's what God wants us to do. And the one man that kept everything, that kept everything that he had to himself and tried to hold on to it, the Lord said, you wicked and slothful, that means lazy, servant. Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness 
weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. He went to hell. And give it to the one who did the most with what I gave to him. God's looking for investors and people that are willing to give themselves to others. Don't allow yourself to just try to hang on to everything. I like what he said. We're not hoarders. But we are intended to be investors. Are you ready to invest your life in others in the kingdom of God? Don't be selfish. Turn to somebody near you and say, be an investor, will you? Praise God. Praise God. If there's any here that need to continue to pray, continue to pray. Amen. But you're dismissed in Jesus' name. Remember, we have um, food for sale downstairs. Um, stick around if you can for time of fellowship. It is free for pastors and the men's um, conference staff. We'll be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. for prayer. Uh, please try to make it back so that God could pour in us so that we can also pour out unto others. God bless you.